Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Brother Muawiya, welcome, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Thanks for having me. Alhamdulillah. It's, a it's really, to be really invited good. On the show. Yeah, it's good to be able to talk, inshallah. I'm really excited um, about addressing what we're going to address today because you did a cheeky little Instagram survey, didn't you? Yeah. 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 Addressing what sisters are looking for, what brothers are looking for. And let's call it what it is what men want and what women want. Okay. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about why you decided to embark on that survey. Yeah. So interesting. Um, ironically, it was uh, partly due to some of the content I was, I was um, uh, consuming at the time, uh, specifically as it relates to uh, what some people call today as like red pill or magta or whatnot. And also I guess, I guess social, um, discussions that have been in in the in the space, um, and also it was a byproduct from um, uh, when we did a matrimonial um, program. So in the past, we had, they have done a matrimonial program where we tried to match people up, and we tried to take a different approach in terms of how to get people married. So we, the first thing we tried to do uniquely was to uh, bypass the whole profile thing. So rather than people putting profiles okay. and having a long list of things of what they do and what don't do and what they like or don't like, we wanted a simple yeah. profile, simple, simple, as in hardly anything on it, and we wanted people to actually engage with each other directly. So the idea was put aside all of the things that you that you think you want and just talk mm. to the person. <laughs> um, because often we found that what people have, that basically they, they put aside mm. a lot of options yeah. um, due to a vision of what they want whereby most of what mm. they want is not really that important in the in the grand scheme of things um and even mm -hmm. not important to them as in they think it's important but isn't yeah. really important to them yeah um so it was all these things put together and i figured you know what rather than people say or rather than me just consuming content and, and hear what other people say what people want let me just ask the people what they want uh and that was kind of what i did in the, the instagram post so i asked a series of questions i got the answers and then I tried mm -hmm. to demonstrate or show from the answers um, my point that I was trying to make at the time. So that was that was the reason behind the, the Instagram post. And then I made it into like a little continuous story thing. And we'll definitely link to your Instagram below this video, guys. You need to check out these answers. It's very, very eye-opening. Um, and I think your approach to allowing people to discover each other, I guess, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. without the sort of the pre-qualifiers, um, mm -hmm. must mm -hmm. have been a very interesting journey for, for people and for you. What did you observe? Did, were people, did they perform better under those circumstances? Was it, was it hard for people to kind of put aside the list and just engage with the person? What, what, how did that go? In, in the marriage process thing, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I mean, just to give you one example, the very first event we held, this is a few years back now, um, there was one brother who found a sister at the event and was very happy. He was happy. She was happy. Fab was happy. Everyone was happy. Mm. But then he approached me and said, brother, I have a concern. So what's the issue? So then um, she ticks every box, mm. but I have one issue. I said, what's the issue? She's a bit short. I said, bro, is that, is it, is it, is it really that important? I said, no, it's not. It's just, it's just, I mean, I'm, I'm a lot. It's just a thing, isn't it? It's just a thing, isn't it? <laughs> Yeah, so I said, okay, but look, bruv, to be honest, oh. in the grand scheme of things, the, mm. if if you had children with her and she was looking after your children, would do you reckon she'd be a good mother? Yeah. Do mm. you reckon, are you happy with her dean? Yeah. Do you reckon that you can actually get along uh, on a personal level? Yeah. Mm. Bruv, what more do you want, brother? I said, wow. I said, re I said realistically, after, yeah. over a, 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 in a year or two, would this issue be an issue for you anymore? And do, mm. do, do you really think of an issue in a year, year or two time? And he thought about it, thought, probably not. I said, brother, so you're literally turning down what's in your hand for the mm. potential of finding someone that is just a tad bit taller. Hmm. And so he, he took advice. Mm. Mm. He, took, he took the advice and got married, alhamdulillah. And then far as mm. they're still married to this day. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. That, that, that what you just mentioned there, turning away something that's in your hand, for the hope that there's a potential that is just a bit more perfect than this one. I think it, it's, it's, we're all suffering from that as a culture, it feels. It's like there's yes. always something better to be had. There's, there's someone better, there's a better job, there's a better career, there's a better house, there's just better somewhere. And we all believe that we deserve 
better as well I, I, the deserve part maybe maybe because I, I don't necessarily it's not not everyone has that not has everyone that about that's themselves. True. yeah yeah but I mm. do think I do think people think they have enough time hmm <laughs> as in they, they think okay as in we already have this idea that people get married maybe 25 maybe 30 we already have that 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 idea as in that's a normal age or an okay age to get married whereas mm. realistically 25 is too late in my view wow um mm. so if you if you view that look marriage is not, not necessarily something you should delay if that's what you want to do get married yeah so if you can do it then do it um mm. you're better off uh, in the long mm. run on, on the ba- on balance of probability then if you have that urgency in yourself then you you, you would overlook these things like people tend to do once they hit their, hit their 30s when they hit their 30s then they overlook things and another sad case not sad case another another case we had in that matrimonial thing there's one sister who came she was about 40 something i don't know what it was 40 something 46 i think it is but i'm not sure if it was 46 and she said oh brother i'm looking for a husband i said okay cool let's let's what 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 exactly are you looking for and she said mm-hmm. anyone just i said i said yeah i know but do you have any preferences said, no just just a man you know <laughs> just anyone and um and i, I tried i tried to say look would you prefer a particular age but she said look brother look do you have anyone available stop digging just, okay just <laughs> give me that man give me something wow. and you look at the contrast if you were just to ask i don't know i don't know her individual reason for it but one can speculate yeah. that she's now 46 what possibly does she is she going to give a list of things that she wants and doesn't want mm. um so i mean if everyone took that approach that look what do you really want from a marriage other than just someone to love and, and cherish that's mm. it really mm. and the question is can you achieve that with the person who's shorter than you or yeah. or not as educated in you in x y and z i mean can you achieve that level of happiness Mm. without these boxes being ticked if the answer mm. is yes then are mm. those boxes really important true yeah so that was kind of what i was trying to get at uh, with some of the questions i was asking because people have all these lists of things that they want um that aren't really that important in in the grand scheme of things um which is I, kind of ironic because we, 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 when you look at the what's becoming popular now with the whole red pill ideology thing um, this kind of almost is the opposite because the, some of the ideologies of red pill kind of dictate that there are things we want that are almost uncompromisable. Whereas I don't mm. think that's true either. I don't think there are things mm. that are uncompromisable beyond Dean. I mean, Dean, obviously Dean is Dean and, that, and that's, that's a religious thing. I would say, I would say Dean and I, I have to say, I would say character. Obviously the Hadith yes, mentions yes, Dean and yes. character, um, but yeah. that's the minimum right? Somebody who yeah. has decent Dean and is a, is a good person, Yanni, because I mean, things, <laughs> even you know what I mean? Like, character. Mm, like he's, he's a, I mean, I'm, I'm trying to like boil it down to really yeah. the basics, someone who will be kind to you. Just be nice to well, you. Well, I, I mean, know. the thing is the, the idea of a good character, I would even contest that to me. And the reason really? why I say that, yeah, because a person can be could have a character which is defined socially as not being good character but it could be a character that fits that person that other person i mean okay. it's what fits okay but that's a personality when i say good character i mean like okay opposite is a bad character dishonest selfish uh you know kind of you know mean cruel violent you know stingy those yeah. types of bad characteristics if you look at the opposite yeah, I, that's that's what I'm saying. Not so much personality, but you still don't think that character is is a. I mean, is a let me give an example. Mm. Let me give an example. And then, again, we have, to, we have to refer back to the the sunnah. Mm. And this is the thing I think that a lot of red pillars don't 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 acknowledge or recognize. Mm. When it comes to marriage interaction between people, this is not like uh, science or medicine or not. In the sense that. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Sallallahu. companions experience mm-hmm. every possible scenario yeah. that can occur. Mm-hmm. Marriage, divorce, khula, difficulties, children, loss of loved ones. Mm-hmm. There's everything in life they've experienced. So to, to say that we don't have examples that we can draw from mm-hmm. in that, does, that it, it, doesn't sound, it doesn't make sense. So let's mm-hmm. look at an example of, you mentioned the word stingy, as in you can't have a husband that's stingy. Well, that happened, Abu Sufyan. He was described as being stingy by his wife. 
but that never resulted in a divorce. And we can't even say mm. that they were, she was necessarily unhappy. She was, she was unhappy with him being stingy. Of course. But she was still his wife and they still got along. So obviously there's something there. A person could be stingy. A person could be a bit mean. A person could be a bit rough, but that could still work. Guys, this See, is, the thing uh, is this is food for thought for everybody, subhanAllah. Okay, okay. I keep mean, keep talking. Me, the way I see marriage, and again, I'm I'm biased because obviously we're all biased in our own way in terms of um yeah. our own experiences. But the way I see yeah. marriage is practically anyone can get along with anyone else if they try. And I say, and I say practically, yeah. there are certain things hmm. that are, that I would say uh, would break it. I mean, if someone's a serial killer, obviously. I mean, there, there are certain things, there are certain oh, boundaries. You, you serial killers have fans all around the world, <laughs> and many, many wives that look after them in prison. So that's not even a deal breaker. So what's the deal breaker then? What what is what is something that is like? If you guys don't have this, ah no, this this yeah, I mean, there's nothing there. I mean. I, uh, I I would say it's down to a personal choices okay. and personal decision, meaning um, a person would have to look at their options, look at what they have themselves, look at what they want, and make a decision on that. Um, I don't think there's there's, a, there's necessarily a person who's unmarriable. I mean, that's, that's, that's what it comes down to. Is there someone who is unmarriable for everyone? I don't think that's the case. I mean, that's, that's, that's basically yeah. the, the question we have to ask ourselves. Is there, is there someone mm. who is just so bad, he's unmarriable to everyone? And I think that's not necessarily the case. I mean, let me give you an example. Yeah. Let me give you an example of how traits can be really weird. Mm. Someone who is always punctual, always on time, always gets things done when it says it, always, you know, you would expect that to be like a great thing, isn't it? You know, of course, that's just great. But for some people, that's like, I can't live like that. No. I, I can't, I no. can't live. No. It's a no from me. <laughs> but but there you go. So there, there are certain circumstances yeah. and certain character traits that in one scenario is great 100%. and another scenario is terrible. Let's flip it on the other side. Someone who's yeah. super relaxed is all is, is hardly ever on time. Whenever you tell them to do something, they're like, come on, let's go. I'm like, okay, I'll be there. I'll be there. Chill, man. Mm. Why are you rushing me? You're rushing me. Yeah. Again, you might think that's, just, that's so annoying that this person's always late. It's, it never takes things seriously. Mm. But Again, that's actually a very good trait in some some circumstances because and that for some won't... people as well that fits yeah. with the way that they would like to do things. So yeah, just yeah. those two examples that you gave, uh, I probably would go for the second and the first because uh, yeah, because of myself and how yeah. I do things. So, mm. but the irony of that even is that sometimes we can imagine you know a laid back person would fit a laid back person, but maybe a laid back person would actually fit mm. a person who is punctual because they're bad and so or. It, 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 it depends. It's, it's about how much yeah. are you willing to sacrifice to make this thing work? So how much are you prepared to sacrifice to make it work? Do you think, so that's one. What about the initial, the, the, I want to say compatibility, but that's not what I mean. I mean the click as in we can kick it. We get along. Mm -hmm. How, 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 cause I'm, I'm thinking of these bad character traits that you're referring to. Mm -hmm. stingy over punk overly punctual or punctilious uh mm -hmm. you know too laid back etc if you get along with that person and you have love for them it's just one of those things you have to deal with isn't it it's not a deal breaker it's just that's just how he is that's just how she is after after the fact i mean once you're married to the person mm -hmm. you know it is what it is that's just how he is that's just how she is but how, what about the getting along? Do you think that that's something that people should maybe pay attention to? Or do you think that that also can, is negotiable and can be worked out? Um, I, th I think, I think it's, I think people need to, to, to really sit down and ask themselves, what do they want from a marriage? Because I think what people mm. want from a marriage mm. isn't necessarily what they need to get from a marriage. Meaning Ooh. if they want from a marriage, their best friend, that's not required. You get what I'm saying? As in, you, I mean, how else, do, how else has mankind um, got married to the strangers for, for centuries? Mm. And then after the fact, they develop love and affection and whatnot. Mm -hmm. they have, you have your, your, your mates and your best friend and whatnot. You, there are other things that you can do. Uh, if you want someone to be your best mate, you can have, you can have friends. Mm. It doesn't have to be your wife. Mm. Um, there are many, but, but, or for example, uh, this is a classic one. 
lots, a lot of people they get they, they struggle with this one. Um, they want perfection in their spouse, as in if they're not like this and not like that, they're messy, they they're this, they're that, they can't cook properly. You know, some people say, okay, I mean, is that is that is that all they are? That one thing mm-hmm. is that mm-hmm. is the whole in the whole insan that they are is that one thing? Mm-hmm. And I think I think if if everyone really asked themselves, especially those who are either in a marriage or have been married, if they ask themselves generally, um, can you so? Uh, is this issue made worse by yourself? Mm-hmm. They'll admit it. Yeah. I, I ponder on it. I dawn upon it. I, yeah. I mention it over and mm-hmm. over again. I make yeah. it an issue. Yeah. Well, sometimes you can say, you know what? As, as the hadith said, if you find something that's tasteful in your wife, mm-hmm. maybe you might find something else that like, you, pleases you. Mm-hmm. I.e., don't focus on what you don't like. <laughs> Elevate that which you do like. Mm-hmm. And maybe mm-hmm. you might appreciate that thing more. Just overlook. I mean, like I said, for, for example i've had people say oh this person is so messy okay but really end the whole marriage you know split kids from their parents over Ooh. you know clothes here and there i mean you can't you can't work out something on that regards hmm. think about it someone being messy is a thing yeah divorce is another thing mm. which is which uh, did they are they really the same are they on the mm. same level mm. uh, that's you know, I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm yeah, saying i'm, yeah, I'm saying yeah, you have children you built something, but you, this person picks their nose and flicks it, or whatever the case, whatever, whatever the case may be. They burp aloud, or they 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 obnoxious, they loud, they laugh so loud, and it's, it annoys me and that kind of stuff. Right. I mean, really, I mean, you have children. We all understand children. The need for a child to have both mommy and dad in the house, and you're trying. Remember, you're trying to build something. Yeah. Realistically, are you going to destroy this house you're trying to build? for this one or two thing i mean i mean the thing is we don't we don't even apply that same logic to our lives let me give you an example you have a business you're trying to build a business you have employees are you telling me every employee is best character or they're good at what they do for your business mm. hmm. if they're good at what they do for your business but yet they are not good in other things you can mm. overload other things because ultimately you're trying to build a successful business Right. And marriage is about building a successful home. Hmm. Mm-hmm. So, for example, for the brothers out there who are listening, who, who might, might be really irritated with their, with their wives, for example, I mean, ask yourself a good question. As irritating as she is, is she a good mother? Are you happy to leave your children in her custody when you're out of work? And are you, do you trust that she's going to look after them and raise them well? Hmm. If the answer is yes, what more do you want? realistically i mean you're trying to build a home trying to build something successful you're telling me you can't overlook one or two small things where ultimately the whole home is being built being established it's the individualism for me i think it's it's everybody wants to be happy and to be happy individually you know like their best life and their best self and if i'm not happy it's a problem you know like well, there's a, there's a book I'm sure you must have heard about. I'm sure you must have heard this book, um, Empowered Wife by Laura Doyle. There's a chapter in there, which I thought was probably the most significant chapters of the whole book. It basically, if, you want to, if someone wants to ask what's the book summarizing, it's summarizing how, I would say, how a woman can successfully manipulate her husband in her favor. That's how I would do it. And, and there's nothing wrong in saying that. I mean, it's that's, that's, from Laura Doyle. Yeah, yes. Yeah, I read yeah, her yeah, surrenders. It's, it's panelized. Actually, it's so interesting. I, uh, I was recommended her book, Surrendered Wife by yeah. Alia Umrayan from Honest Tea Talk. Yeah. And uh, she said, I've read this. It's great. I said, look, even that title is triggering. OK, get it out of yeah. my face. Surrendered what? Yeah. Um, but she said, no, 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 no. Give it a chance. Give it a chance. Yeah. Um, I call myself a recovering feminist or a recovered feminist because I mm-hmm. know how deep the programming goes. But surrendered yeah. wife for me? No, I wasn't having that. Anyway, I, that's probably I why they, it... the, the second book was called Empowered Wife. Maybe it probably was yeah, just to bring in more of the market. But um, the point is, I read the book. And it was like, this makes sense. Uh, mm-hmm. Not only does this make sense it will it will work for me because Mm -hmm. you know the reality is i'm a traditional wife Mm -hmm. i love it being kept wife is lit okay (laughs) that is just being kept woman is wonderful and so if i can you know as she says surrender i think her the way that she put it was um 
Yes, I think it's really about relaxing into your femininity, to be honest, and being prepared mm -hmm. to receive, whereas a mm -hmm. lot of women bring a lot of masculinity to relationships, to their marriages, and they mm -hmm. want to control and they want to make sure things happen a certain way, their way, dominate the situation, get their way, which is all very masculine energy, right? And mm -hmm. I think that the way she was saying it was just, look, give him space to lead. Because if you don't give him space, you're just going to end up pushing him away. And then mm -hmm. you're going to say, well, where's the leader? Like, why, why are you not showing up? Why, why do, am I doing everything, you know? And John, uh, John Gray talked about that in um, Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus. He talked mm -hmm. about when a woman tries to micromanage her husband um, mm -hmm. and ensure and make sure that, you know, like when he looks after the children and you're like, you have to give them this at this time and you have to feed them that and don't give them any of this and make sure you change it. Da, 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 da. And if he mm -hmm. doesn't do it your way, you're like, forget it then. I'll do it myself. And then you don't ask him anymore. Yeah, it's and undermining. Then, right, exactly. And mm -hmm. by time, he's doing hardly anything because you've taken back all those roles because you're like, forget it, I'll do it. Um, and now, of course, you're overburdened, you're stressed, you're resentful, but you created that situation because you mm -hmm. didn't need to control that situation. I don't know, what are your thoughts on that? I mean... The, I, I would I would say that the 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 main message of of her book I read the first one, which is the one you mentioned. I read the Empowered Wife one, is is effectively just saying, how do you achieve how do you achieve your goals? Mm, yeah, you could try to achieve your goals in a very masculine dominant way, but basically that's not how men work. Mm -hmm, and if yeah. you try to if you try to have two men in the same house, you're mm. going to clash. Yeah, and then when you do clash, you complain why is my marriage not happy? What you could do is try a different approach to get what you want. Yeah. And that's basically it is. It's just based, basically playing yeah. the game. So it's like, for example, government. You could protest mm. outside their house and make mm. noise and embarrass them and make comedy, co comical jokes about them on TV and belittle them. Or you can approach them privately, mm. you know, and speak to them, uh, put your, your case forward in a manner which at least give them the opportunity to make them feel that mm. they have a choice. It's, it's, it's just two approaches that achieve the same thing, yeah. but one may be more effective than, than the other. Mm -hmm. um, so, so I don't, I don't think she's, she's, she actually, she's actually saying, don't do this, that, and the other. She's just saying, do what you want to do, but in a more effective way. Now, that, yeah. even, even just today, actually, uh, one, one brother uh, called me because I'm trying to help him and his wife sort their situation out. And Hamdala is working. Hamdala. But uh, I just basically told both him and his wife, you both are maniacs. I said to them, because... <laughs> You, you, you're basically at each other's throats oh. trying to command the other to do X, Y, and Z, mm. not realizing that it's not effective. Mm, 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 mm. You're doing it your way and it's not working. Mm. She's doing it her way and it's not working. Mm. So why don't you just try another way? Yeah. And I'm glad they, I managed to get them to try another way. And the brother called me today saying, Alhamdulillah, it's been a, a week and a half and it's working. Oh, uh, and he's like, but this, but that. I said, bro, all this butt you're doing, you're trying to go back to your old ways. Yeah. Don't do it that way. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just work with me. Stick to the plan. Um, do a big example. I mentioned today as an example. I mentioned today that. Um, but why is why isn't she doing this? Why isn't she doing that? I said, bro, I'm telling you, if you fulfill this role mm. and, and and succeed at making her happy, being mm. a wife, I can almost guarantee she will do what you want her to do without you asking. Because mm. she wants mm. to make you happy. Yeah. She will find ways and see how you become, how, what makes you happy. And she will do that mm -hmm. to make you happy. Yeah. But as long as you're at each other's throats, she's not going to do that. No. Even no. if you tell her to do it. So, um, so basically I said something small, something as small. Like, he said, he, and he, they said to me, actually, what he said is quite true because since we had that meeting, every day when he comes back from work, she makes him tea and he, she knows he, he know, and she lo he loves tea. Mm. I said, great. That's the first step. Now your step is mm. gratitude. Mm. if she's making you tea you need to exaggerate your happiness oh yeah because you're no, now reinforcing yeah mm. I said, that's exactly what i said i said exaggerate <laughs> your happiness even if you're not that happy even if yeah. tea is watery and or milky and you're not how you like it make <laughs> her feel happy for mm. doing it because yeah. then she'll say oh great this is what makes me happy and she'll do mm. it further yeah. so you can achieve what you want to achieve without saying i want tea mm. so that's basically this is why I'm saying that when it comes to marriage, back to the, our initial discussion mm. about marriage, people go into marriage with wrong expectations and it's not their fault. And I always say to people, it's not their fault. 
So why is it not their fault? Mm. Why is it not their fault? Because they've never been married before. Okay. I mean, you're expected to perform a role you've never done before. So both of you, generally speaking, are figuring it out hmm. as you go along. Mm. And that means it's going to take a very long time before you've got, you've got a working plan. Hmm. You know what I like about that approach? It's a, it's a humble approach. You know, it's, it's going to be okay. We're going to work at it. Um, we're probably going to mess up along the way. I'm going to mess up for sure. <laughs> You're probably going to mess up, but we're committing to making this work, which is so different. I think from, like you said, the expectation. And I think, you know, I, th I think we have of so many layers of ideas about what a relationship should look like. And I, I say relationship on purpose because you know, and any, you know, viewers disagree with me, you know, you can comment below, call me out. But I think that what we see all the time around us in popular media, uh, in, in, in social media, popular culture, films, songs everywhere is relationships. It's not marriage. Now mm -hmm. you might say, yeah, but a marriage is a relationship in it. But I would say actually a marriage is a lot bigger than a relationship. Yep. And you could have, if move halal and haram to the side you could have a gyal and you you and that gyal you're like that your relationship is great is fun is cool you enjoy each other's company everything everything's nice but the marriage part now are you on the same page does she want kids do you want kids your families hate each other you don't want to live together she doesn't want to live here you, now all the other elements mean that a marriage would not work so while yeah. a relationship could be great you guys could kick it a marriage may not work and so because yeah, in marriage you're, you're building and a relationship you're not necessarily building this is it relationship is is fun times and relationship is an enjoyment yeah it's just enjoyment. Yeah, exactly but i think that and again I, I i say i say this and open to to for anybody to 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 call me out but i think that what we are bred for is relationships and not marriage because i know for a you know a sister or a woman who wants to get married what's she looking for she's looking for a man to love her you know to appreciate her she wants the romance she wants to have the you know the companionship and the relationship aspect she's very clear about that she wants to be mm -hmm. in love she wants to be loved the relationship is so crystal clear and in her head in order to have that relationship i need this 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 this, this. these are these things that i need right Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But the actual marriage and the work of marriage and even the ultimate purpose of marriage, we are not bred on that. And it's hardly, I think it's hardly ever spoken about, you know, certainly yeah. it's not what people love to make poetry about, you know, the, the work of yeah. marriage, ah, apparently it's not there. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah I mean, like the, it's um, basically things, things like duty, responsibilities, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. these uh, 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 basically, I, th I think, like, like you said, the, 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 the institution of marriage, I'll, and I'll only I'll limit this to Muslims in the West, because I'm sure Muslims mm -hmm. in Muslim countries still have their culture yeah. that if they fall back on, but yeah. at least Muslims in Western countries who, who, who countries who are born and raised and watching the same programs and TV shows yeah. or not, are looking for what they see on TV. Mm -hmm. um, it's a very individualist, selfish approach, and you can see that manifest in the way they treat the children in a relationship. So I'll give you an example. The, cl the classic case, which is not uncommon, I don't have to say I heard or I speak, we all know, of marriage break apart, and then now the husband's not allowed to see his kid because wife's not allowed to see the kid and that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Now, if you just sit back and just ask yourself a question, put aside what, how, why their marriage broke apart and what kind of stuff, the question is you have children. Mm -hmm. This child is a combination of two people, mm -hmm. husband and wife, mum mm -hmm. and dad. There are responsibilities that are there that supersedes the individual mum and dad. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Responsibilities that have to be fulfilled, irregardless of mum and dad's wishes. Mm -hmm. But because we see so often mm -hmm. this disregard, it shows that they only care about themselves. Mm -hmm. I mean, one brother told me, and this is quite sad actually, when I heard it, I thought in my days, that um, one parent was so adamant not to give the the child access mm -hmm. to the father or to give the father access to the child actually told the child the father's dead <gasps> La 
that father was shocked to find out wow. when he met his son his son was surprised he was still alive because he was told he was dead wow now again some might say oh but maybe he was this maybe he mm. was that again <laughs> yeah. all this is irrelevant how yeah. he and her was to themselves yeah. is mm. one discussion yeah and they got divorced and that's been dealt with yeah but now we have him and his child that's a different discussion mm-hmm. but this is my point the point is that we view this responsibility as something for me this is what i want who cares what you want at the end of the day and I don't, I, don't, I don't say this to belittle someone. I mean, obviously your feelings are important, just like his feelings are important. Everyone's feelings are important. Mm. But do they supersede all other responsibilities? Mm. No, 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 no. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's literally what I'm seeing is even in the non-Muslim space, people asking again, hold on a minute, what was the purpose of marriage again? <laughs> what was that marriage thing all about? Because what's yeah. going on now? This ain't it. You know, like this, yeah. this is, this, this ain't it. You know, if marriages are going to be based on, like you said, individual fulfillment, uh, feelings, emotions, how, how much you're vibing in that period of life or whatever, they are necessarily going to be short-lived. They, they're, they're going to be breaking up and children at the end of the day, I don't know what you feel about this, but for me, when it comes to grown adults, you guys do whatever you want. Yeah. You want to get together. You want to be together for two years. You want to break up and marry someone else. It's fun that like do whatever you want, but the children, that's, that's the, that's the issue. The children. And the worst thing is that, that psychology, hmm. that individualist selfish psychology will impart upon the children. They'll see that this is how they will grow up thinking, Oh, this is how marriage is. If they're not happy, then this is how they must behave and whatnot. I mean, the the way I view marriage, my analogy will be, two rocks you've got two rocks mm. and they're rubbing against each other mm. now obviously these rocks weren't made to rub against each other they were they were, they're just two individual rocks so there, mm. there's a lot of friction there's a lot of noise there's a lot of you know heat but over time mm. these surfaces would smoothen off mm. and eventually they'll become flat surfaces on each other mm. this is how marriage is there's a lot of friction Mm. he's he's this way she's that way i don't get it blah 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 but if you recognize that over time these will smoothen off wow. as your character will na- in an inadvertently change mm. eventually you get to a point whereby you can't imagine life without each other because you've, you've you've become the same shape now you've become mm-hmm. you fit you've cleaved but it's about get it's about getting that way it's about getting from that rough surface to that mm-hmm. smooth surface takes a very long time and the reason why it takes a long time is because there's so many things that got to happen. You've got to have children. You've got to wean those children. You have to raise those children. You have to educate those children. They have to go to secondary school. Now they become adults. All these events throughout your life will shape how you decide, how you talk, how you behave. Mm. I mean, anyone who's been married for longer than 10 years will recognize mm. how they were at the beginning is not how mm. they are now. Mm-hmm. And how they are now is not how they will be in 10 years time. Mm. So if you recognize that you're going to change, make that change a positive way so that you're changing for the benefit of this thing you're trying to build. Unit, this unit, right? Exactly. The, the unit, the unit. And not just change. And the thing is, what's good about this is that you're not trying to change, necessarily change them. They will mm-hmm. change. Mm-hmm. But you need to focus on changing you, how you're going to change. And this is what the issue is. When you're individualist, is that why aren't you changing? Yeah. Why aren't you doing X, Y, Z? Why aren't you working harder? Why aren't you trying to be home early? Why aren't you trying mm. to make sure you don't burn the roti or whatever? But the question is, what are you doing to make the marriage work? And what are you doing to fix things? I mean, this, you get what I'm saying? So yeah. anyway, I'm going on about the same thing. But that's basically why, why I believe that is that, generally speaking, all marriages have the potential mm. to work mm. if one's willing to make it work. And I don't really believe that something is really, really at the end. Really. I mean, I've, I've had people come to me and say, oh, I want a divorce. I can't take this person. No, no, no. It's the end of the world. This person is so is a narcissist. He's a this. He's a that. I say, cool. After about uh, probably an hour of chatting, you, and you scratch the surface, you realize, wait, if this person was to work hard enough and blah, would you go back with them? Mm, I will think, yeah, I probably would. So therefore, isn't that bad then, isn't it? I mean, you still mm. have feelings then. You still will make it try. So it's just about yeah. making the effort. I'm married to a narcissist. 
or I escaped a narcissist. I don't know how many times I've heard that expression. Uh, in it's, a, it's a buzzword at the moment. What's the, happening? That like what, what, what's going on with all these I mean, narcissists narcissism running around? Is, mm. is a real thing. Narcissism yes. is a real thing. Yeah. But ironically, mm -hmm. <laughs> ironically, I learned about narcissism from a documentary that was on Channel 4. This was a long time ago, probably in 2020, 2010, because I ain't seen anything on Channel 4 for, for almost a decade. So it must have been mm. about, about that time. Um, but it was something on Channel doc documentary on Channel 4 about an actual clinical narcissist. Mm. And would you believe he was married? Oh, I can't believe that. I can't believe and, that. I mean, happily married. As in, oh. she was happy to stay with him, and she—I mean, he was—he was—he was. I mean, when they was filming him, it was an hour-long documentary. It was very interesting to see how it was, and and describing what a narcissist actually looks like. It was interesting for me because it's 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 like a coldness, mm. but innocence in coldness. As in, it's like he doesn't recognize his coldness. He would just say mm. to him, you know, for, an example of saying something like she was she gave an example like um like if he, if she made bad food, he'd just say this is terrible. What kind of food is this? But it's because he's unfeeling of anything, anyone around him. He doesn't right. even recognize that it's even hurtful. It's like she has, she's, she's come to acknowledge that this is just him. It's not that he's an evil person. Mm. It's that this, this is his, his mental makeup. He, is, mm. he has an inability to recognize the impact of his, what he says on mm. other people. Mm. For him, it's just the facts. I mean, this is terrible. What's wrong with it? What's wrong with saying it's terrible? He, he's unable to do it. Yeah. But the point isn't that. The point is, she recognizes his faults, mm. but loves him for what he's good at. Right. This is interesting because, as you said, evil person. And I do think that narcissism in this time is like code word for evil. I was married to a narcissist. Ergo, he was an evil man. He was a bad guy. Um, interesting. Interesting. I mean, so, I mean, the, the joke is, I'll, I'll just mm. one quick, quick, quick point about it. I mean, if someone comes to you in the future and says, "Oh, I murdered a narcissist," maybe just ask them, "Okay, what made him that way?" Meaning, sometimes, like I said, the reason why I say that question is important is because sometimes people they fail to ask that question. Like I said before, what have they contributed to that? Oh, okay. I see. Oh, how? Okay, that's what you mean. I didn't. I thought I mean, you meant childhood or the way that he was no, no, raised no, no, no. or something like that. No, no, no. As in, let me give you an example. I give this one, 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 one uh, example. I'm trying to think of an example that is not so specific that 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 person might, might be watching this and say, "Oh wait, why are you telling me my stories?" <laughs> okay, let me think of examples. Like, um, uh, some might have an argument with their husband, and they said X, Y, Z, and they said, "We well, can't understand why is this way." And I think I can't what scenario. There was something happened just the other day with another couple that called me up. So they had an argument or something like that, and um and then they said oh look i even praised the person and i mean you know i don't see why he's behaving this way i even praised them and, and tried to compliment them i said to them you know uh the word they used was you know you could be so nice because this time that this this the, the other day you did this 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 this, and you were so nice when you did this i said but that's not a praise that's a that's a that's a, that's a cuss she said how is it a cuss i praised him said, no you phrased it as you was this way that's I, a backhanded why, compliment you not if I've this, ever heard one. Mm, yeah, because mm, mm. it is a compliment, but really it's a dig because yeah. you're not this way now and mm, you could mm. be this way, but you, you get what I'm saying? And yeah. that triggered him to react the way he did. So right. I, although his behavior was incorrect and it was wrong and he admitted that, mm. what she failed to realize that she triggered that behavior. Mm. So it's not to blame I, I, her or to blame yeah, him. It's, yeah. the, it's the thing is that... Is it, 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 we, married couples need to recognize that both are, are to blame for what happens, not just one side. It's not like one person is, oh, I'm so nice and I'm so happy and I've done everything for you. And he's like, I'm a monster, I'm a monster. Mm. It, it doesn't, it doesn't, human beings don't function that way. How do you function that way? I wonder whether there is room to acknowledge somebody's contribution to a bad situation without being accused of like victim shaming and and those types of of, of... How, how do you mean explain that how do you mean okay so you said in, in that situation that she said something that triggered him to do xyz and i mm -hmm. know that you know in another context somebody said oh but you're blaming her now you're making her responsible for his bad behavior you're victim shaming or victim blaming right uh, mm -hmm. you're putting the onus on her when he's the one who's in the wrong and yeah. i get that 
but I'm, this is why I'm asking the question, can we be mature enough to realize that we do all co-create situations? We, we have a part to play, even if you bear the brunt of the situation, you get the, the hard end of the stick, right? Basically, you suffer as a result of the thing that was triggered. That doesn't mean that you may not have played a part in it, if that makes sense. Yeah. I mean, the, the best example I can think of will be, I mean, the best thing to start off with this conversation is that often, and this happens a lot, I've discussed this issue thousands of times, people bring examples whereby it's entirely his fault, obviously. Course, yeah. There's something mm -hmm. which is, for example, uh, extreme domestic violence. For example, he comes home, black and blue, hospitalization on a regular basis, that kind of stuff. Mm. But the problem with those examples is that those are rarities. Mm. That is not the, actually the norm. Mm. And let me give you a scenario about my own self, yeah? On how scenarios are really one-sided. Mm. So one time, this happened months ago, but it, I, I, I like to bring it up because it does show, it does show how perspective is so important when it comes mm. to dealing with issues. Mm. So one time I said to my son, he was playing Minecraft on PlayStation. And I said, turn the TV off, we're going to pray. So, sorry, I didn't tell him to turn it off. I turned it off. I said, we're going to pray and let's pray. So in my mind, TV is off. The mm. game is there. Mm. Let's focus on Salah. Mm. You know, straightforward. And then he, I put the remote control down and then he picked it up and turned it back on. Oh, I mean, that's your reaction. Oh, I mean, what's, what's going on with that? And that mm. was my reaction, probably mm. more extreme. I'm like, what the heck is going on? <laughs> so my only reaction was, oh, is that how it's going on now? So I got, I went to the PlayStation and I plugged it out. Mm. I said, we're going to pray, turn it off. Mm. You know, boundaries. Yeah. Dad, turn the TV off, let's pray. Don't yeah. go beyond the boundaries. Okay. Mm. So after that, he was a bit vexed, as, you, as a child would be. And fair enough. I mean, I just, I just manhandled you. Whatever, isn't it? Yeah. But that persisted, like, for weeks. Oh. Him being vexed. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, how dare you be vexed with me? I mean, you're the one who <laughs> wants to pick up the remote control to disobey my, my command. Yeah. And then you're vexed with me. Mm -hmm. So then I made it clear. I said, your attitude is stinks. I mean, mm -hmm. how dare you treat your dad this way and blah, 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 you mm -hmm. know. I mean, you can understand this. I mean, the, yeah. the scenario is quite clear. Yeah. So eventually, I'm telling my wife, look, this boy, you better speak to him because I'm going to get really upset here. What, what's mm -hmm. it, how, how, how you treat your parents this way? It turns out, though, mm -hmm. it turns out that he didn't turn on the TV to be disrespectful. He just wanted to shut down the game and then right. pray. So he just wanted to quickly go, go I don't know, what button, this button, shut down, yeah. and then pray. Yeah, yeah. So in his mind, it wasn't disobedience. He was just <laughs> trying to complete what I was doing. Yeah. It just so happened that the way I saw it, it was mm. disrespectful. Mm. Okay. So what's with the vexness though? What's with the frustration yeah. towards you there for like going on for weeks? Well, it turns out that this world that he was building for months, when I plugged it out, it deleted. So he oh. lost his, his game so this is the wife was like saying you know you should apologize for what you did i said but i only plugged it out because of what he mm. did it was so if anyone to blame me blame himself but the point here is not blame or not blame it isn't the point yeah. here is that there was it, this was actually a blameless situation subhanallah oh no poor thing oh i feel so now, pain. Now, now <laughs> sorry for him whereas Initially, it was like... It's true, we were caring about control. Brother Muawiyah at the beginning, right? And now we're on the side <laughs> of the kid. No, we are team kid, team Minecraft kid. So, so we can see here that this is a scenario yeah. which I'm sure occurs all the time in all mm. scenarios, in all relationships, where yeah. one person does one thing, and in their perspective, why are you behaving this way? Yeah. If you just flip the script yeah. and look for another perspective, why are you behaving this way? And there actually isn't mm. a blame mm. to be put on anyone. It's just lack of perspective. Yeah. Yeah, and and I and think that's as, yeah, I think I I totally agree with you, and I think you know sometimes we can build, well, we tell a story, don't we, about the people around us, uh, and I think you know husbands can do it for their wives, and wives can do it for their husbands, and he's always like this, he's always like that, he never does this, he never does that, and then I I believe that everything that we see 
we're filtering through the lens of, yeah, but that's what he's like. So he does something seemingly innocent or actually even a nice thing, but because the story you're telling yourself is that, well, he always does X, Y, Z. It's just a confirmation of, well, you see, he always does X, Y, Z. So even people's actions, we don't just respond to the action. We respond to our interpretation of the meaning of the action. Yeah. And that's where what we you can just catch said ourselves. Mm. What you just said there, um, it's really, really important. And this is one of the things I mentioned uh, in my recent videos about Red Pill, is that it's to do with framing. Mm. How do you frame the situation? Mm. So, for example, one of the things, the, the most common things that I mentioned about in Red Pill um, ideology is that women are hypergamous. Those want the best. Mm. Um, and there was a similar scenario, if, if, a, if a man who was practicing, two men who are practicing, but one is more richer than the other, who would you choose and blah, blah, blah. That, they always frame it in that, in that scenario. Mm. And the interpretation, the conclusion is that women are hypergamous. But that's according to a particular frame. Mm -hmm. Let's, we can look at the same scenario mm -hmm. from a different frame and have a, have a different, and have a different mm -hmm. uh, interpretation. So mm -hmm. let's look at a different interpretation. Historically speaking, of the men and women out there who has generally had more money, who has generally been more, more, more stronger, who has generally been uh, more dominant and that kind of stuff, as in the reason why a woman may choose a stronger man or a richer man, because that was generally what mm. was there. In a scenario whereby a woman is highly successful and earns a lot more than her husband, is that necessarily what she's still going to go for all the time? Or is, or is she okay marrying someone who maybe isn't as successful? As that? For example, if a woman was mm. a doctor, earning really well as a doctor, and her husband was a chef, chefs don't get paid as much as doctors. Are you telling me that her husband, she wouldn't marry a guy if he's a chef because she's a doctor? If she gets along with him and she loves him and she has affection for him, well, she, is him being a chef really going to break the marriage down? It's to do with framing. Mm. But again, I want to push back on that a little bit. And yeah, go, go for it. Go for it. Again, because everyone has a frame, right? So yeah. if my frame is that I've reached a certain point in my life, me, I'm just any person, Miss Bloggs, I've reached a certain point in my life, educationally, financially, uh, you know, security wise, you know, profession, et cetera, et cetera. I cannot respect a man who is less than me, who earns less than me, who has less than I have. And I deserve someone who's on my level or higher. I know that you're familiar with this because women are constantly saying it, <laughs> like constantly saying it. And this is yep. something I don't understand. You know, my, my message to women right now, please stop going on TikTok and, and just talking about your madness because it's just, it's, it's so embarrassing to just see yeah, yeah. my sisters in womanhood just like bleh, onto this social platform. All your ridiculous demands your ridiculous expectations, your arrogance, your, your conceit, your, your meanness, really, and, and disregard mm -hmm. for, for you know, the basic respect and, mm -hmm. and just basic decency. I can't stand it. I, 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 I understand why MGTOW is a thing because mm -hmm. MGTOW feeds on that stuff. So we've changed the subject yeah. guys. We've gone on another yeah. one, something else now, <laughs> <laughs> but MGTOW men going their own way black pill yeah. all of that they are framing they allow those women and what those women say about men who are broke dusties ugly uh, ain't got no game you know all, all these you know short fat whatever the case may be right losers basically mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they allow those women to to, to be their frame so now they yep. view the whole world through the frame of through that lens yeah. women want only the top one percent the top ten percent they every you know they don't date under six foot and all of the data and all of that feeds into the paranoia and the i'm sorry but the nihilism of yeah. you know i am not select i am not in the top ten percent i'm not a high value man therefore what's the point all women are like this shallow vacuous vain um demanding don't have don't mm -hmm. bring anything to the table and all of that because yeah, yeah. ladies that's what y'all putting out on social media and they just make videos well, of it <laughs> but anyway but that's the thing is when they say women are like this the question i say is is that due to her innate nature or due to her nurture very good point 
very very because, good point mm-hmm. um from what I, there was one there was one really good video i stumbled across literally it was you know those those feeds on youtube and you just yeah. click on it so one guy wants to compare the desires of women for men or what they want in a man yeah women in the west and women from the east mm. and he chose philippine philippines it was completely different yeah totally different. it was completely different as in they, they weren't concerned about any of the what the women no the west about. it's nonsense it's literally postmodern western society where just everyone thinks yeah it's just delusion <laughs> as you know so, mtr says it's delusion it's just yeah. this idea that I, I qualify for whatever i want you know and what i yeah. want is what i should have and if yeah. if you know and and basically if you can't bring what i want to the table then you know get lost but again like you, you know like you said people thinking they have time yeah, and that they, they have, have all the options yeah yeah but like i said even even when you mentioned anyone that you said you're you're educated and you've got you've, you've reached a certain place in your life that you can't imagine yourself respecting someone less mm. than yourself that's what you think I, it's, a I, 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 it's a story it's a story yeah it's a story i do believe that if you had a man whom you love deeply because he treats you well and yeah, yeah. all that other stuff then his qualification is overlook even how tall he is you'd overlook because he took you able you basically the question is yeah. are you able to build this structure with this yeah. person that's what the question is yeah and but like i'm saying that i think the, that but, mm. go on, from that no no i was just gonna say that the it's it's not building a lifestyle and an individual lifestyle with a man and kids attached. One of my other guests mentioned that, which I thought was so powerful. She said, look, you either are going to choose yourself uh, and, you know, this vision that you have for yourself. I'm that kind of woman. I deserve that. That's the life I want. That's the car I want to drive. That's the house I want to live in. That's the kind of man I see myself with this vision, right? This fairy tale that that you've got in your head and possibly with a man and kids attached or you're going to join with another human being and you're going to build something worthwhile and you're going to put everything you have into that and you're going to sacrifice for it and that's going to be part of your life's purpose but the two of them are not the same i mean if you even if you look even if you just scratch the surface on on, when people speak about what they want for a marriage i think you'd probably even find that kids are not even in 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 the top five things that they want for a marriage oh yeah that's Where where, where it should be the top one i mean what else are you coming together for other than to have kids and raise another ummah that is the primary goal because people don't want someone... marriage they want a relationship they want yeah. couple goals yeah. they want yeah. to have the the romance the halal romance you know the halal love story that that the halal hollywood blah blah 